So over the weekend, the fabulous Aeolus had a card reveal for the upcoming set Isle of Madness. And it was a card reveal that was kind of like two card reveals because it was revealing a brand new mechanic coming with the set. And I really want to talk about the mechanic and the card that she revealed because it is going to change the way that Legends uh, deck builds for a long time, in my opinion. So the card that she revealed is Cloak and Dagger, or just Cloak Dagger. And essentially, this is one card that counts as two cards. So when you're in the deck builder, it's going to look like the image that is on the screen right now. But then it's eventually, when you draw it in game, uh, going to split and become two separate cards. So you draw one card and it becomes two cards in your hand and you play them both individually. So in this case, what are those cards? Well, the cards are Cloak, which is a one Magicka red item that gives plus zero plus two, and Dagger, which is a one Magicka red item that gets plus two plus zero. Now, at first glance, this looks like maybe a, a bad Steel Scimitar, because Steel Scimitar gives plus two plus two and is one Magicka, and that's it, right? So you get better stats for less investment. But the real key here is versatility, and in the past we've seen some of the mechanics and legends that tried to promote versatility fall a bit flat. Exalt might be one of the best examples of that, but this, however, is a much better way to approach versatility because you don't have to pay both costs up front. They represent cards as resources, and cards as resources is important for a couple of reasons that I want to talk about in a moment. And the cost difference here, at least in the case of this card, we don't know what the other ones will be like, um, is pretty negligible. So I am actually a big fan of this card. When you compare this to Steel Scimitar, Steel Scimitar has been kind of a staple in aggro for a bit now. It's a very uh, powerful, cheap, aggressive card. And one Magicka can sometimes make or break uh, aggro matchups because you're typically... Uh, trying to race and every little bit counts but the reason that I like this card is because there are many times where you'll equip say like a steel scimitar because you need to make a value trade and you don't necessarily need the attack to make said trade uh, your creature might already have enough attack you just were trying to let that creature survive you know if your uh, mammoth that's a 4-4 is trying to trade into another like 4-3 three, three drop for example steel scimitar allows it to survive now, in this case, however, you can choose to use the cloak part of Cloak and Dagger to just provide the health that you need and then save the reach for when you might need it most later. Uh, vice versa, sometimes you're just trying to push damage and you don't necessarily need the health, in which case Dagger is a fantastic choice. So I really like the versatility that this card provides for only a marginal increase and the fact that it's two separate cards is also not irrelevant because as we've seen from things like uh, Crown Quartermaster for example, giving that dagger as a separate card is important because it is very common to pitch to something like Corner Club Gambler or other like draw discard effects and Cloak and Dagger and the other split cards will provide you with two cards and if you only need half of them at any given point you can essentially pitch the other one just like you would some of those other cards right you, just like you would pitch a completed contract so the fact that this provides another card as a resource is important uh, another reason it's important is because many times uh, having this be a second card means a second trigger so if you look at a card like dragon star rider for example that lets you draw a card whenever an item is equipped to Dragon Star Rider. And Steel Scimitar would let you draw one card. This, yes, is one more Magicka, but you get two separate card draw instances for the essential like cost of one card slot or one card draw. So uh, there are other cards that you know trigger when items are played, and as such, this just could end up being really cool, really versatile. I, I like it a lot. Um, I don't know if it's going to 100% just like replace Steel Scimitars and decks because sometimes just the plus two plus two is what you want, uh, specifically in your hyper aggressive decks. But for example, uh, if I was running Steel Scimitar in a mid range Dagath list before, I would strongly consider Cloak and Dagger instead because uh, the mid range list, you don't necessarily need the hyper aggressive stats on a cheap card and 
being able to put cloak on something and keep it alive is important. And then using dagger to maybe bump something up to five attack or more while not necessarily committing the health might also be really important. And I just, I'm, I'm excited. And the reason that I'm excited for this mechanic, and I kind of mentioned it before at the beginning of the video, is that depending on the other cards that we see, depending on the number of split cards that are printed and the effects and mechanics on them, uh, it might change the way that we deck build in Legends Forever. And we've almost kind of been seeing this slowly over time anyway. There was a time when Legends first released and we were in open beta where uh, card card count mattered, right? Cards as a resource mattered a lot. You could win games strictly by attritioning out your opponent's resources. In fact, that was the most common way that Control Mage used to win in the open beta. You would just get really valuable two for ones and three for ones, not give your opponent additional cards and slowly bleed them out. Now, as new sets have been printed, new cards have cycle on them, uh, power level has kind of ramped up, we get more uh, card draw, but also card like cycle and choice and selection with things like Endoral Mastermind and Merchant's Camel. And as such, a lot of decks are just not running out of cards anymore. Aggressive decks don't run out of cards. Control decks just don't run out of cards. Everybody has a way to refill their hand. So instead, it's less about card volume the way that it used to be, and it's more about card quality and card choice, card optimization. In other words, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, is that each card in your hand represents an option, right? It represents a decision tree when you're playing the game and so cards as a resource still matter because the more that you have in your hand the more options or choices you have potentially now these split cards will represent a way for you to put one card in your deck but represent multiple options or multiple choices multiple paths down that decision tree and it can mean that if you top deck a card like in the past you might have to top deck a card that does a thing like if you need ramp, you need to top deck ramp. If you need card draw, you need to top deck card draw. And if you needed both, well, like you were out of luck because that just didn't exist or whatever. And I'm not saying it's going to in this new, new set, but um, depending on the way these split cards are implemented and the other ones that we see, there is a chance that our flexibility will increase, right? Some of the most flexible cards in the game and the open beta, right, in our core set for Legends were things like Shadowfen Priest because it was a creature that also served as a silence that also served as support removal, right? It served three purposes. That's a great flexible card, and as such, it was played in just about every deck that wanted to run Endurance back in the open beta. These split cards have the potential to be just as versatile. Again, we don't know all of them or what, you know, ways they will manifest themselves, but they've printed them now. So even if we get, you know, just like a small cycle, like we're seeing now, we might see more in the future, right? Just like when Magic the Gathering first implemented split cards and then they uh, later on revisited them and we got a bunch more. Now that they exist, you know, the cat is out of the bag, Pandora's box has been opened, and we have the potential to see more like this in the future. And it could uh, end up shifting decks from like resource management to instead choice management, option management. And uh, that could be really fun. That could be really neat. That might be a way where they... Uh, or instead of trying to uh, reward people for just drawing the right thing at the right time, maybe they are transitioning to uh, a point where in Legends you always have basically like a fistful of cards and they're rewarding you for making the right choice at the right time. Because there is a difference, right? Like you can win on a top deck and don't get me wrong, like, you know, you made the right choice during deck building and you played to your outs and whatever. I don't want to devalue somebody top decking in a Nasi and winning five grand by any means because... You know, they're great players and they did the right thing, but um, in in an era or uh, a world of legends where you are uh, rewarded more for choice and less for luck or top deck RNG, I think that could be interesting and unique. And I, for one, welcome our new dual card overlords. I'm excited to play them. I'm excited to see the full suite of them and... Uh, I want to know how you're going to use them. So we're at that point now where I'm going to be done ranting and I want to hear, uh, you know, what you think about this card, what you think about the mechanic. Are you excited? You know, how do you plan on using this card? 
uh, what kind of split cards would you like to see, the whole nine. Uh, again, I'm pre-recording this, so by the time this comes out, I will be traveling, but I will be uh, watching my phone because I'm really excited for reveal season. And even if I can't make a video for every Legends reveal card, because I'm traveling, I will certainly do my best to try to revisit all of them when I get back because uh, I'm just, I'm excited. So I'm, I'm sure I will be on my phone a lot during uh, reveal season, reading comments, checking social media, doing all of that. And I want to hear from you. So uh, let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Until next time, may you walk on warm sands.